Hi everybody, Kent Martz here. Welcome to Monday's broadcast of our uh, media outreach warm-up for our Amazon Live program. Today we're going to be talking about some science stuff and how do you know. Uh, so Dr. Daniel Barth will be having a show talking about Mars and uh, things that have a new announcement that came out very recently about uh, efforts to grow plants in lunar soil and uh, some interesting 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 results from that that uh, I think you'll be fascinated to find out when Dr. Daniel Barth comes on at four o'clock and we're gonna be doing a warm-up show here for a little bit for our Amazon live broadcast that comes o'clock comes on at 2 p.m. Central Time every day Monday through Friday however we will not be show, having a show Friday because Tyler Bowman and I will be going to Fort Worth Texas to participate in the Fort Worth cameras photo fest on saturday so if you're in the dallas fort worth north texas or want to make a long drive to fort worth you can come see us we're going to be doing some astrophotography during the day doing solar photography as well as demonstrating our mounts and things like that talking to customers there at our dealer fort worth camera so let's talk about as you probably have heard uh, if you've been watching these shows in, in the past, you're going to know that I really like the Explore One 20 Power Microscope. This is a great little microscope. Uh, we've got a picture of a penny we took. I just took a picture of that penny with my uh, smartphone up to one of the eyepieces. Now, this is a binocular microscope, so you're literally looking through two eyepieces and actually two lenses. A lot of some binocular microscopes have one eyepiece then then splits it with a prism or mirrors into each of your eyes so it sort of gives an effect of three dimensions but this microscope literally has two objective lenses that shine down on the deck now this is not your typical uh, microscope when you think of microscopes you think of prepared slides and we're going to have a telescope a telescope microscope with prepared slides here in a few minutes this microscope uh, is a effectively it's a reflection microscope. There's no light that shines light up through the specimen. You put the specimens on the work area. So if I wanted to go into my pocket and pull out, let's see what comes out. Ooh, there's my where's my buckeye? I got a buckeye in there. There's my lucky buckeye right there. Picked it off of a buckeye tree myself, and we can put that buckeye on here, and we can look at what it looks like. Really simply, I always take my glasses off when I do this stuff and get it there. And we can simply look at the surface of the buckeye. It looks like leather right here. And as I focus, I can see different zones that are in focus on the buckeye. It's a pretty cool thing. And do we have that penny up? Have we been able to show that penny, Paul? Penny, Paul. <sighs> well, like I'm not going to do it for right now, so... How about the bumblebee? Do you have the bumblebee or the carpenter bee somewhere out there? So anyway, we'll get that up and show you what a picture that he's over there. Paul's over there trying to get uh, it queued up in the carousel. This is a 20 power microscope. It runs off of a couple of AA batteries. Uh, it does have little clips that you can hold a prepared slide on. However, this little piece comes out and there's no micro, no light down in here for it to shine up. This is just sort of a placeholder. So these little clips, effectively, just keep that placeholder, the hole in there on the deck. So uh, we do have a chat function up. If you want to give us a shout out, we would appreciate that. We'd like to see who's watching. And thank you for joining us. Uh, so going to move on to, uh, well, we talk about what's good. this is good for. This is a great microscope for looking at like a butterfly wing or an insect or a uh, printed material, a penny, if you want to know how what 20 power looks like, uh, an American penny has a date on it. The date almost fills the screen. So that gives you an idea of how much magnification we're talking about. Not massive, like uh, the microscope we're getting out, ready to look at has 900, 900x, uh, but this is 20x. And I think he's found the B picture and he's going to get it queued up here in a minute. So uh, it's a great adjustment. It has can uh, focus really high. You can get some fairly large items in here, focus down on them. Uh, rocks, mineral specimens would look great in here. 
uh, insects, twigs. Uh, might be fun to get some soil and look in soil and see if you can find anything that looks cool. Uh, all sorts of uses for this. I would love to have had this one as a teenager uh, out hiking and messing around in the woods to take a look at, you know, whatever I found. You know, bugs and millipedes and uh, roly polies and mushrooms and toadstools and all that stuff. So there you go. You can see a close-up of a bee's face. You can see the compound eyes. You can see little whiskers on it. Tiny, tiny, tiny little hairs. Uh, quite a great microscope here. Now, we do have some micro cameras that have come in that I am going to try and get hooked up so we can get a live shot through some of these microscopes at some point. Paul's also just queued up a picture of a grasshopper leg. Uh, yes, this is a grasshopper. And you can see those little spikes that allow it to uh, grab onto things and slide. Uh, none of these bugs uh, were uh, uh, killed for these pictures. They were all bugs that we found, uh, insects and whatnot, that we found dead out in the parking lot and have used them for educational purposes. Uh, Going to be collecting up some more here this spring or summer so that we can take get some new specimens. Because you know, after a while, those things dry out and they get sort of uh, crumbly. And then we end up having to... Um, um, get new ones. So there you go. Now you got a few ideas about what this microscope can do. I'm going to move on to the, turn the light off because we want to keep the batteries, right? Okay, so I'm going to move on to the Discovery 900X Biologic Microscope. I'm going to take this little plastic keeper cover off to make it easier. And we're going to flip this up right here. And there you go. As you can see, there's the kit that it comes in. How am I framed up, Paul? Pretty good? Comes with a microscope. Comes with a hatchery for the brine shrimp. Yes, you can hatch out your own brine shrimp. When I was a kid, they were called sea monkeys, but more properly called forward. Is that pretty good? I can't. Looking which way they need to move. There we go. All right. So I'm going to turn it so I can see it here. Move the telescope out of the way a little bit. Have a Petri dish. Have a sample cutter. A red and blue food grade dye. So you can dye your own samples and look at them. And I stress they're food grade. You can eat it if you so wish. I bet it doesn't taste really good. But it'll dye your mouth and tongue blue or red but it won't hurt you any. So I'm going to try moving it back on this shot now. Now you've got some tweezers, a couple of vials, a beaker, some manipulation tools. You also have some prepared slides up here and some blank slides so you can make your own slides as well right here. The camera's having some freaky trouble trying to focus. Maybe I'll hold it up and it can focus on it better. There we go. So I'm going to pull the microscope out. We're going to talk about the microscope a little bit. And I'm going to take out the prepared slides. We also, today, on the show, are going to have some uh, better prepared slides, different slides available uh, to show you as well. So the microscope is really easy to use. It just flips up and the light comes on. I think you can see the LED come on right here. If you flip it down, it turns it off. And there's a mirror right here. So if you have a bright light, you can actually reflect light up in the stage that's how all microscopes work. Uh, it reflected light up into the stage through the little viewing port until the in in creation of incandescent light. So the turret, this little thing you turn right here, has three different lenses, and you should always start on the low power lens, right? And so I'm going to use the prepared slides that come with it to start with, and I'm going to pick the onion bulb epidermis, so it's the skin of an onion bulb. And I can roll the head up, and I'm going to move this so, and move the sample. I can see it. I'm going to put it in the very middle right there. And now, to focus, you simply look into it and focus it all the way down. From experience, I've learned this. Go all the way down, and then start real slow. I mean, so if you can see my hand right here, this is how much you want to turn it to get into focus. 
and boom, there it is right there. So I turned that a sixteenth of a turn maybe. I think people, or I know people, try to focus way too fast. They expect it to be, you know, see it come into focus like a camera and then go out. Really long focus. That's not the way a microscope works because what you're focusing on is so thin and so tiny and so small, the depth of field, which is the term that describes how big the focus is where it's in focus, is, no pun intended, microscopic because it's just, you know, fractions of a millimeter. Uh, let's see, anybody on over there? No comments yet? Give us a shout out. We'd love to hear from you. So just simple like that. If you want to increase the, the, mag the magnification, you can just simply turn into another uh, eyepiece and then look in it again and refocus. And now I've got it at 900 power. I'm seeing some really amazing stuff. And with the study guide, you can learn what these things are and what you're looking at. And then if you just want to move around the slide, you can just move the slide around and look at this. I prefer low power views typically because uh, you can I can see more with them. It's not such a huge view that it's hard to focus and you can see a lot of stuff in these prepared slides. Now, this is the prepared slide set that comes with it. The onion bulb epidermis, pop this open here. It's not the right one. Open. There we go. Pollen, which our allergies all love. Broad bean leaf. Apple. Hydrilla verticillate, which is a uh, plant. And then seven blank slides that you can use to make your own prepared slides of whatever it is you want using the sample maker and following the directions. Now, we also have a high quality set of Bresser glass slides over in the carousel today or in the Amazon Live carousel. These are really nice slides. This is a mouth smear, so skin cells from your mouth. And it comes with tomato leaf, cross section, and the fly. Here's a fly, a slide of a fly. Very simple to just slide it in there put the clips on, get it centered up, and then focus on the slide, and you can move it around and see all sorts of things on this fly. As you can see, it's antenna. You can see its wings. Really cool to look at. And let's see. What else does it come with? Human sperm smear for reproduction discussions. Mitosis of animal cell, in other words, a cell division of animal cells. And here's an onion root tip, a lily anther, which is reproduction part of a lily flower, a, a corn stem, a volvox, which is a microscopic water animal, and diatoms, which are also microscopic water thingies. So microscopes, a great way to see the microscopic stuff going on. It'd be interesting to take a soil sample, see if you can find living things uh, at really high power, like with this microscope or even with um, uh, the 20X microscope as well. Now we're gonna jump to the other side of the spectrum. This is a really simple to use telescope. It's a Maxitov Cassegrain in our first light series. It has an objective lens size of 127 millimeters. It's focal length, which is the measurement from where the glass elements start to where the light comes to focus is 1900 millimeters, which is about that long, but it's in a small package because the light comes in, starts getting corrected. There's a curved mirror right here that starts focusing the light. And if you look right here on the front of this telescope right there, you see that black circle that black circle has a mirror on the back side of it that then reflects it back out. Down here, comes out of the back of the telescope, goes into our inch and a quarter diagonal right here that simply goes into the back of the telescope where the, the tube is, and it also comes with a 25 millimeter super eyepiece 
and I have the phone adapter already installed on this. And so tighten the set screw down so it won't come out. And now we can just look in here and turn the focus knob and it's going to focus on what we want to focus it on. So in many telescopes, when you turn the focus, the draw tube comes out. In this system, the mirror, in this system, the mirror moves forward and backwards to focus. So a slightly different system, you're not going to see the draw tubes come out. You're going to see it come into focus because that mirror is moving forwards and backwards. It's on the Twilight Nano tripod. It's on the Twilight Nano tripod because it's a simple left, right, up, down, very simple to use, has a handle right here that you can just simply move up and down. And this one's been setting. It was brand new out of the box last week. And when I get these, I loosen up the grease that's in them to uh, just distribute the grease a little bit better uh, than what happened to the factory to make it slightly easier to move. But this is a really nice intuitive left, right, up, down. There's no polar alignment or anything else you have to do. You just have to set it down and then use the red dot finder to look at your object. Now, it comes with a hanger right here and this little eyepiece cover. Both of these say, don't look at the sun. There's also the same emblem on the dust cover that goes on the front, a little emblem that says, don't look at the sun because we don't want you looking at the sun unless you know what you're doing. And that comes with the sun safe uh, sun catcher system that we sell. And at this point, it's about time to knock off so we can get ready. Uh, Tariq, hello, Tariq. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for giving us a shout out. We're going to be going over to Amazon Live here where we will start at 2 p.m. in about six and a half minutes or so. And we're going to go into a whole lot more detail. Look forward to having you follow us over to Amazon Live. Uh, we appreciate you joining us on this Monday. We're going to have a full slate of stuff all week long. Again, no shows on Friday. Uh, we may have Annie may do a show on Friday, but Tyler and I will be on the road to Fort Worth, Texas for a, uh, um, a one of our dealers is having a show and we're going to go. We're easy driving range, about six hours away, so easy for us to get there. Anyway, thanks for joining us here on Monday. I'll see you later for Explore Scientific. I'm Kent Martz. Bye-bye, everybody.